All right, what is going on guys? So of course I can talk a whole bunch about the M2 processor in the new MacBooks till I'm blue in the face, but I do wanna switch it up every now and then. And this is something that's on the opposite side of the spectrum. This is the Acer, one second, A515-5636UT. It's the Acer Aspire 5. And this is essentially the Windows 11 version of the laptop I reviewed earlier, I believe this year or even last year. And so I just wanna give a showcase of products that are on the opposite side of the spectrum that are a little bit on the cheaper side of things rather than always showcasing this thousand dollar laptop because listen, not everyone can afford something like this. There are people who are you know, juniors, seniors in high school or just going into college and they need something that will you know, fit their budget and get them by. So you know what else gets me by? Not having a sponsor. So let's get this unboxed. And of course, we are going to bring out the big boy. Green pack label, or packaging I should say. So uh, shout out to Acer for letting the people know. So we have our cables that are in two separate packaging, or packages, which is, uh, I would say, not ideal. All right, so. What does it smell like? Ugh. Dirty laundry is what it smells like. All right, so this is the Acer Aspire 5 Windows 11 edition. So looking a little bit, wow, that is a huge heat coil. Do you guys see that? But we do have Aspire written here on the back of the laptop. And then we have these two rubber pads, which I will show you what they do. So when you open up the laptop, and this is something that not Acer does only, but other laptop manufacturers as well, but Acer is pretty much known for it. Um, the rubber actually lifts the laptop up a little bit to help with airflow and keep the processor cool. And this is also running the i3 11th gen series by Intel. Now, looking at the laptop here, you can see that it is 15.6 inches and it's a full size keyboard with the number pad as well. So let's go ahead and get this powered on. And like most laptop unboxings, I'm gonna have to plug this in. So let's go around and talk about the ports real quick. So we have a USB-C port, two USB-A ports, a HDMI jack, full-size ethernet, and a port that allows us to charge the laptop. And then moving on to the other side here, you can see that the laptop is currently on with that blue indicator. Uh, we have a charging indicator light. Oop, it's going in and out of focus. And then we also have a USB-A port and a Kenenson lock. I don't know what's going on with the focus, but hey, at least you can see the ports now. So looks like we are in Windows 11. Sit back and relax while the magic happens. This is probably the most uninspiring thing that I've seen during a laptop boot up process. If you're gonna make it seem magical, at least have some type of animation going on because I'm just looking at a blank screen with a scrolling wheel. What is it saying now? Getting things ready for me. Gotta step it up, Microsoft. All right, so apparently Microsoft is going to restart my computer during the setup process. So <laughs> I'm just gonna talk about some of the labels that we have here on this laptop. So we have an ultra thin design, which I would say, I guess this is pretty thin by standards in this price category. It's definitely thinner than laptops like five years ago, so I'll give it that. Um, moving on, we have an elevated design, which is what I showed you guys a little bit earlier. So when you lift the laptop back, it kind of lifts itself back up. Moving on, we have narrow bezel, which I would say these are pretty narrow. By tech enthusiasts, they might say that this is bulky, but I would say these are pretty narrow. We have an aluminum top cover, which... Whoa. There's like a weird smell in the middle. I'm not gonna say what that smells like, but don't smell that, that's disgusting. Okay, anyway, we have ultra fast wireless speed, which I'm assuming is Wi-Fi 6, because they're talking about MuMimo. And then last but not least, we have HDMI 2.0, which is actually pretty impressive in this price category, especially with all the other ports that we have on this machine. So nice to see that we have that. All right, now let's go ahead and sign my life away to the license agreement that Microsoft wants me to accept. Is this new Microsoft? Like, 
Imagine if you don't have good internet, you have to install whatever latest update there is that you have in the market before you can even use the laptop. And to be completely honest, this is kind of just killing the excitement I had when I unboxed a product. Like I unboxed it, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to use the laptop. And then it's just prompt after prompt after prompt after download after prompt after download after prompt after download. And I, it's just like, I just want to use my machine and open up a web browser and do something on the internet. Goodness. Let me go get my tools to open up this laptop. All right. Uh, genuinely, like genuinely, I have no idea how long this is going to take, right? I'm at 13%. And I have 300, 300, and it says it has ultra fast wireless speeds. So it should not take this long, but knowing Windows, it's probably gonna take forever as usual. So while it is downloading and doing whatever it needs to do, I'm going to open up this laptop and see what we're working with. And I know some people are gonna be like, oh, please disconnect the battery. It's like, I would, but I really just don't have time for this Microsoft. Make a better product. There we go, there we go. Bada bing, bada boom. Ya pizza is ready. All right, anyway. So, uh, for some reason, Windows suddenly wants to be booted up here. So it says this might take a few minutes, so let's keep talking about the internals of this laptop here. All right, so this is what you get on laptops that are on the entry level side of things. So unfortunately, what you can see here, it's both good and bad. There's a lot of space in here, and when you move up to more expensive laptops, they really maximize pretty much every inch they have inside the bottom of the computer. Biggest thing that I see is this battery. This battery could definitely be bigger. <laughs> Other more expensive laptops, you see the battery basically covering the whole bottom side, but this is still a big battery nonetheless. Uh, we have two speakers, left and right. <laughs> left and right, uh, it's a little bit opposite for me. Uh, we have an M.2 slot, so it's nice to see that on a laptop that's around $300, we're still getting NVMe, and it is upgradable as well. We have a slot to put in SSD. <laughs> SSD, am I an idiot? I meant to say a RAM. So the RAM, you can have it be upgradable as well. Um, I'm trying to see where the other RAM would be, but it looks like it's most likely... Um, soldered onto the motherboard, the one that's on board. So that's nice to see. So if you want to add any additional memory, you can. Um, I highly would because I think I think this thing ships with four gigabytes of RAM, which is it's doable to get stuff done with. But I would highly recommend at least going up to eight, especially with Windows, because Windows just seems to eat up a lot of resources in general. Um, obviously, this is where some of the CPU action happens, and then you can see that it's being coiled over here by the fan that is currently on. We have our Wi-Fi card, which is, can't necessarily tell what it is, but I'm going to assume it's Wi-Fi 6 from that Moo Mimo sticker on the front. We, it looks like we also have a SATA that we can use to install a hard drive as well. Um, the hard drive doesn't have to be one of the traditional spinning drives. This can be a regular SATA 3 SSD. So it's nice to see that we can also upgrade the NVMe, but also add additional storage as well. So like I said before, it's nice to see that we have this level of modularity on the entry level laptops. And it's kind of sad to see as we increase in price, that privilege just gets taken away from us. So in terms of upgradability, I would definitely give this a plus in my book. Um, but Acer would be nice to see you maximize the space of the battery here um, because there is a lot of excess space here. Um, but overall, looks pretty good. So I'm back in Windows. Let, let me go ahead and put the cover back on this thing. So <laughs> as you guys can see, right, like I was saying with the memory, four, four gigs of memory and we're using more than half. So Please, please, if you have the opportunity or the means to upgrade the RAM, please do so because you're not working with a lot here. Um, it's also very interesting that I don't have a network tab. So that's interesting. Why can't you connect to the Wi-Fi? See, this is, the, this, is a, uh, this is another problem I have with a Windows laptop. It's like when it comes to the Wi-Fi cards, 
they're always so finicky. Like, it's not that hard to just type in a password, communicate with my router, and connect. That's it. That's it. Unless there's something wrong with my internet. Bum, bum, bum. And just like that, I turned off the Wi-Fi, turned it back on, and we are in business. And this is a MediaTek Wi-Fi 6 card. Interesting. So it's not even, what's the other one that people really hated on? Uh, killer. Killer Wi-Fi card. I'm not really so sure. I'm not so sure about MediaTek, um, but it did take a little bit for the, this to get connected to. So not, it's not faring so well. So let's go ahead and open up. <laughs> Golly, can I just use the browser, Microsoft? Jeez. All right, so we're at 1080. I want this thing to run at 4K because we are rocking a Wi-Fi 6 card and I wanna see how impressive this thing can get. But keep in mind, I think most people are gonna be watching this in 1080p. All right, um, yeah, I this is a <laughs> this display is pretty bad. Usually, when it comes to videos, you can't really tell how bad the viewing angles are. But if you can see it on camera, as you can see now, this is atrocious. This is horrible. I don't know how this display is worse than the laptop I reviewed earlier in the year, which I believe is an older model. Maybe it's applied chain issues but this is a noticeably worse display it just seems so you have to be at like the perfect angle in order to see the colors and even then it already looks pretty washed out and i know some people are like wow you're watching a youtube video you don't have like a real photo it's pretty easy to see if a display is good or not so look at this i minimize it and i'm disconnected from the wi-fi once again this laptop is already having problems. And I know some people might say, oh, it's because you opened up the laptop while you were updating it. Mm, possibly, I'm not gonna rule it out, but I just find that to be highly unlikely. Also, another thing I wanna point out is that the speakers were also not that great. And once again, you can say, hey, it's because you opened up the laptop. But I will also say, I find it highly unlikely that I did anything to the speaker. From what I've heard, it sounds pretty bad like noticeably worse than the acer aspire 5 from last year now i'm connected back, back to the wi-fi so let's do our typing test all right um the keyboard huh i believe this is the same keyboard that i typed on on the previous generation the only issue i have with it is at least now is it just doesn't feel as solid. And I know it probably sounds like I'm hating on this laptop right now, even though the price point is in the mid 300s, but I just feel like the overall build quality is not the same as other $350 laptops that Acer has to offer, and even Lenovo as well. I think you can get much better value for your money. I don't know if it's because of the Intel processor that they had to cut some corners because I know in the aspect of Intel and AMD, um, Intel processor seems to run a little bit high on the business cost side of things. So it might be that the AMD processors, they're just a little bit more, there's more of what Acer has to work with in terms of their budget to improve the rest of the computer. Um, because even this one, it's not even like a laptop that can fully go all the way down. It's, it can only go at this, God, I should have done math. What is this, an obtuse? what is this 120 degrees i don't know but it just doesn't go all the way down at 180 degrees i know that much but i don't know this is just sort of feels like a disappointment to me for a laptop that's in this category um popping sounds already but it's just not let me go ahead and do the camera test 
before I give my final thoughts on it. Here I am, look at this. I'm disconnected from the Wi-Fi again. What am I doing? This MediaTek thing. I thought killer cards were bad, but man, this is just something else. All right, let's take a video here. All right, this is the Acer 5 Windows 11 S of the product stack that Acer has. Um, camera looks pretty good, but I will say I do have a stage light right here, so it probably looks really good. Um, I can already tell if I were to turn off the light, this thing would look horrible. But if you are in good lighting, like with most camera laptops these days, you're going to look pretty good, and I would give this a pass. In terms of the microphone, well, we're going to have to see what it sounds like. All right, so took the video, and now I want to touch on the trackpad because even the trackpad itself feels kind of cheap. It's very mushy, and sometimes it feels like I'm clicking down, but it's not. I have to give like a little bit of extra pressure in order for it to be registered. I don't know, man. I thought I was going to really enjoy this laptop because it's another Acer laptop, but this is not that great and I probably wouldn't recommend either. I understand they're gonna must, there are gonna be some people who say, hey, I just need this laptop to do the most minimal task of web browsing and things of that nature. But I would say there are much better products out there in this price category that are in the same manufacturer's product stack and even other manufacturers as well. This, I don't know why in terms of the build quality and just the overall fit and finish and the features that you get aren't that great. I mean, cool, we have Wi-Fi 6, but it doesn't matter if my Wi-Fi card just keeps disconnecting every five minutes or so. Um, this could be Windows 11, who knows. Um, as much as I enjoy the upgrade upgradability path on this laptop, I don't think it's enough to overlook the other issues that this laptop has. I would say using this computer now, um, just get the AMD model with the previous generation with Windows 10. From there, you still have more or less the same upgrade upgradability path. You can still upgrade the RAM. You can upgrade the Wi-Fi card. You can upgrade the SSD as well. And you're just getting a better feature set laptop as well. You're also more, more potentially getting better battery life because this is the 11th gen Intel. And Intel, in terms of 11th gen, it's good. But comparatively speaking to Ryzen, it's not that great in terms of battery life to performance and just in general for the value of your money. So that is my unboxing and first experience of this laptop. I don't know if this is the worst laptop that has come across this channel. Um, I know I harped on a lot about the HP Pavilion, but I would say this one most likely takes the cake. Like, I don't know who designed this laptop, but there's no real reason to have HDMI 2.0 if it costs more than HDMI, I don't know, 1.4 but you're hurting the other components of the laptop overall, right? You have to give and take in some aspects of what you can include in the laptop here. The display, it really hurts to look at. The keyboard, it's okay. Trackpad, eh, could be better. I mean, can't recommend. But that's my unboxing and first impressions of this laptop, guys. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. I appreciate every single sub, like, and comment, and as always, guys, much love. Sorry that this was more of a disappointing unbo unboxing experience, but you have to be critical when you can. So, see you guys in the next one. I'm also curious what the Z button does. Probably puts it to sleep. Yep. Please don't wake up ever again.